We're very careful not to go touting anything until we're confident that what we're offering is the best thing that exists on the planet for sellers. And that created some dicey times for us. How capable every single human being comes into this planet blows my mind. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquette. Today, we have Justin Cobb from Carbon6 on the call. Uh, Carbon6, they are, are crushing it in the e-commerce space. I think they're doing some really unique stuff. Uh, they've had some big accomplishments so far this year. Uh, they, they have, uh, they're growing seven figures every month. They've doubled their a ARR this year. Uh, and I know you guys said you were burning like a million dollars a month at the beginning of the year and you guys just became profitable recently. Is that right, Justin? That is right. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, man. So it sounds like uh, things are like going the way you, you really want them to go to um, um, now. But I imagine you guys went through some turbulent times uh, and that the startup was pretty shaky. So like, why don't you just take us you know, back to that point? Tell us a little bit about you and why you started Carbon6 and, and how you sure. guys have gotten to where you are. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, uh, great to be on the podcast, Nick. Um, big fan. So yeah, before Carbon Six, I I, I had a, a previous career. I built a large face-to-face -face outsourced uh, outsourced direct sales business. I have just over seven thousand people um, in that business today. A um, bunch of different countries. Got a chance to move all over. I lived in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Poland. Um, we're the outsourced sales marketing arm for the largest telecommunications companies in the world, largest energy co companies in the world. We do a lot of face-to-face -face charity fundraising. We raised over $5 billion for charities over the last decade or so. Um, and my partners and I started buying and building software companies somewhere along the way. We, we acquired a business called uh, named MoneyExpert.com, um, which we've grown over in the UK. Um, so I, I did that business. It was a full-on sprint for 18, 19 years. And lucky enough to have a lot of people who help run the day-to-day -day of, that, of that now. And moved my family down to sunny Puerto Rico, where I am today. I recommend... Uh, uh, lots of your members are down here. Uh, re would recommend for anybody to come on down here, um, unless you love paying taxes, in which case you should stay in the state. Uh, and so, and so, I came down here to 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 take my foot off the gas, so to speak. And uh, I was I was doing a bunch of investing stuff, and that was that was sort of my plan. I was gonna I was gonna you know be involved in my business when I needed to be, um, but but take a bunch of time and um, and get into some 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 investing stuff and. You know, I realized really quickly that that wasn't the way I was built. Everything that I looked yeah. at, I wanted, I wanted to build a competitor to or wanted to find a better way to do it. Um, and, and at the time, aggregators were, were all the rage. You know, it was right, right in the middle of what turned out to be $15 billion in money that went into that space. Um, in fact, the guy who was living across the street from me here in Puerto Rico was the CEO of a small aggregator. And it just seemed like anybody with a nice degree or a good background was putting together a deck and going and raising you know, a hundred million or 319 million or 245 million. And, uh, so found aspects of that, that, that I thought were interesting. And I did a bunch of, of research on, on roll-up strategies. And that seemed like kind of a risky one, but it was, it was obviously getting a lot of traction. And I saw some stuff happening in Shopify where people were rolling up apps or people were rolling up, um, agencies. And, uh, as it turned out, the only people that I'd met Early on in my neighborhood, they were younger than me. That, now there's a bunch of people like the Paul brothers live here and a bunch of other, um, you know, goofballs. But at the time, the the first people that were younger than me that I met were Amazon sellers. Um, one of them, you, I, I know you know Brendan Morris, who's the founder of Seller Tools. And uh, it was intriguing to me because I didn't know how much money there was in e-commerce. And as I got to know the space, it, 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 it was all around me. All the investments I was looking at seemed to be e-commerce. People I was meeting were sellers. And... Uh, what we saw was a $600 billion market, a TAM that was going through Amazon every year, and this really highly fragmented set of services and softwares and a true lack of sophistication servicing that TAM. And when we looked around at a bunch of different opportunities, we just couldn't find anywhere that had a market size that big that had such fragmentation. I mean, even today, our, our estimates put it um, at no company having even 2% of the market and as, and as, and as, and as markets mature, I mean, it's only been, you know, a handful of years since Amazon even started releasing APIs for developers such as ours to build on top of. Um, consolidation is in inevitable. And what we also saw was a consolidation of the revenue on the platform going up with groups like yourselves where people, it's really unique where you can build a brand, you can sell it, and then you can do it all over again. Um, in, mo in most industries, you can't compete. You can compete a lot closer here than you can almost anywhere else. 
And so between that, the iOS updates that, that, that you know, uh, create a lot of momentum for native D2C uh, coming over to Amazon, as well as just brick and mortar and what was happening during COVID kind of speeding up the inevitable. What we saw was a market that had really been defined in its early years by, by solopreneurs coming and making their first million, um, kind of dollar in a dream, taking a course, uh, learning how to sell. Uh, that that was really going to consolidate to professional sellers uh, like like your group um, and these larger brands. And we didn't see anyone that was positioned well to take that market. The, the couple of businesses that we saw in software that were had achieved a little bit of a scale, um, you know, were really focused and were known for, 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 for the new seller. So that's the opportunity that we saw. Um, in terms of how we were going to attack it, you know, in the beginning, there, there was some of it was just kind of arbitrage. We were seeing things if we if we buy them at X and then and if we buy enough of them and we have a critical mass, it'll be worth Y and the and the delta between X and Y is what will be worth. Our, our original plan was just to buy several businesses and then maybe go public quickly in Canada. Um, but really, really early on, what we saw was this huge opportunity to build the ecosystem to serve the professional seller, and and we just didn't see anybody that was particularly well positioned to do it. And and the opportunity very quickly. Um, became a huge opportunity in our, in our minds. And, you know, it's, it's really been a sprint, a sprint ever since you, you mentioned um, early on that it's been a great year for us and it's been a fantastic year for us. Uh, uh, and that's rare, you know, or that's, that's not a common story for software businesses. Um, it's been a very difficult last 16, 18 months as, 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 as the markets have shifted almost, almost on a dime overnight. Um, it, it, it for so many years with money so cheap, it was growth at all costs. Um, and now, you know, it's really been dubbed like the year of efficiency, where now your expectation is you need to be able to grow and you need to be able to do it efficiently. And that created some dicey times for us. You know, it's, as a software company, it's burning money. Um, money was so easy. When we first started the business, we had nothing. We just had a deck and it said like Thrasio, 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 Thrasio. We commerce who had done what we were doing, kind of, kind of done what we're doing in, in Shopify, sort of. And then it was us, and we had this picks and shovel story. That it was that it was the gold rush for Amazon seller, and the picks and shovel companies were the best companies during the California gold rush. And it'd be the same same thing here, and and you know we had some LOIs that we were raising no problem. Um, nobody's raising no problem now, right? The the amount of deals that are getting done are down well over ninety percent at all at at, at 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 really all stages, and and we had to make some difficult decisions just under a year ago. Um, that we were going to have to severely cut our spend and cut our burn and become profitable really right away um, while still growing the business. And, you know, it, it, as you know, it's hard to lower what you're spending, for example, on PPC while raising sales. It, it's yeah. difficult to cut costs uh, while, while burning, but, but things, are, things are, are, are for sure on the right track today. Nice, man. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been... It's interesting to listen to you tell that story and, and me being involved in e-com in Amazon since like 2015. And I kind of reflect on softwares I've used and, you know, people I've networked with and like, and you're right. There's like this wide variety of, of services out there. Like, um, what is a channel, um, is a channel advisor comes to mind. They're a publicly yep. traded company, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And it's like, you know, Omni Channel. I remember looking at Omni Channel software and I was like, you know, why the hell is this one so expensive? And then you've got like, you know, uh, some other random one that some guy just created and it's, it's like, it's like four ninety nine. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like super cheap. I'm like, what is going I'll on? I'll pay here? you to use my software. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, like, so Shopify is an app store, right? And so the main driver of leads um, for Shopify software is the app store. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like SEO inside the, inside the app store. Uh, whereas, you know, here there's an Amazon, it's interesting. There's a bunch of, there's, there's tons of micro communities and, and those communities, uh, and in some ways dictate what software people are exposed to, what services yep. they use. Um, that's been one of the coolest part about it, that, you know, cool, cool, coolest parts about building the businesses is, um, we've really taken an approach, an, an approach of trying to get out in the community as much as possible. We'd sponsor just about every event that occurs on planet Earth. I think at this point, um, and and it's it's a it's a it's a large TAM, but there's a, there's a reason why it's so fragmented. It's because it's because the influence and the voices and all the different pockets, all the different communities, all the different masterminds, um, you know, are are what are what create that that fragmentation in some ways. Is that something you've like you've 
can come to understand that like through this experience or is that something you recognized early on like why it's so fragmented i think pretty early on it was yeah. it, it, it was very evident when we started looking at businesses it was like everyone had a thousand users okay right? like every everyone was doing between like eight hundred fifty thousand and one point seven million ARR and it was just depending on the size of their community. I mean, it was, it was, it was very, it was pretty evident. And so, and so long before we even had the, the right software suite, I think I'm proud to say today, I think we have the, the best range of solutions for that professional seller uh, of anybody on the planet by a wide margin. But early on, we, we started sponsoring before we even had anything to sell. Right. So, so we, we saw, we saw building this distribution network, we like to call or building this network, this community network as being the, the piece that was going to over time drive distribution and adoption of our software. Um, so we started doing that like a, a year before we were even really ready to take anything to market. Nice, nice. What, what, what was some of the early events that you guys were, were going out to and getting involved with? I mean, I got a funny story. I don't think I've ever told the story. So, uh, okay. so, so, uh, we we were doing a partnership deal, I think with sellers funding at the time, and Tim Jordan was the partnership was was uh, he was in charge of the partnership over there, and and we I think we'd incorporated Carbon Six like you know the Thursday before, and we'd already decided like we got to drive some financial solution in here, so we were just and the investors liked it, so if investors like it, you know we got to go find out find a way to do it. So anyway, so Tim goes, hey, are you gonna go to the Prosper show? And I'm like, what's the Prosper show? And he's like, oh, it's the biggest Amazon conference. You, you know, you should, you should, you, you, you should go. And I'm like, I, I, I have no idea. I don't know what that is. He's like, it's like three weeks. I'll give you over. I'll give you the contact. So we huddle and we're like, hey, we didn't want anybody to know. Uh, we don't want anybody to know that we're buying these businesses because we're small and we didn't even have any money yet. I mean, we essentially went to businesses and said, we have a bunch of money. We want to buy you. And then we had to go find investors to give us money to buy the businesses. And like I kicked in and some of the other found it. We kicked in a bunch of money to start it, but like, you know, we were we were buying more than than our than 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 we could fund ourselves, and so um, it was a little bit of a tricky situation. And we thought yeah. that people could just come and overbid us. There were some well capitalized, you know, people executing a similar strategy, and so we didn't want anybody to know. We didn't want anyone to know that we were doing this. So we didn't even want to. We didn't. We didn't go as Carbon Six. We 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 had bought, I think, uh, a, a a ranking service that we didn't even really realize yet it was like Black Hat called Alpha Raven. So we had that at the stand. I think we're probably the only people that ever, you know, openly promoted that at a Prosper event. And, and then like, and then a TPC software that we had and then AMZ alert. And then we had our banner name was Seller Compass. It was just like a made up name. We, we pretended that we were an agency and we were really just going to check out and, and understand like the lay of the land. It was the first event that we'd ever been, been to. Um, and I can remember we had, we had this big stand and we, and, and, and we, we, you know, uh, we hired a bunch of, uh, 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 promotional people and girls to like pass out flyers. And, and you know, we, we set up a lot of people for AMZ Alert that weekend, but more than anything, it was, it was cool just like seeing, seeing the community. And this is like at the height of the aggregator boom. And so uh, Unibrands, who those guys are awesome, uh, close partners of ours. At the time, we didn't know them. So we had this big booth that we, you know, overpaid for, for really no reason. And we have these three softwares, including this Black Hat ranking service that we're signing tons of people up for. I think no one could even believe that we were on the floor with it. Um, this is before the TOS changes, like technically changed. Under Seller Compass, that was our name. And like still today, if we regis register for a booth at the Prosper Show, it's like under Seller Compass, because that was like the original name that we went to. Um, and so Unibrands had like a, this, you know, this small stand next to us and, and, and sellers would come by and they were talking to a couple of them. And then on the second day, a, a raise got announced where I don't, I don't want to misquote the number. I want to say they raised like a $266 million or 175 or some just like funny money number series a and we're like what the heck is going on like we got to figure out how to do that like we're we're taking 100 grand checks from people to buy these to buy, to buy this ranking service thing like we, what, what are we doing wrong uh, that, that was the first event we went to nice nice i, I love that story just because i love hearing um like the what's the word i'm looking for just kind of how unsure you guys were of things but you're still oh, navigating we, things confidently like I assume a confidence in yourself, a confidence in your team, belief in the vision that you guys had. Because I think there's so many people out in the world that they feel that way. I can do this thing. I have this yeah. idea. But then the, the hurdles come in, you know, money, people. Yeah. 
And, and you can overcome those things. Like if you're listening right now and you have a dream, you have a passion, like you can overcome those obstacles. You can overcome money. That was a big one for me to realize like, oh, wait, like money can be easy. Money can be the easiest thing in the totally. business sometimes, right? Um, so I love that. I love that that's how you guys were operating. You, you know, like when, you know, when you're a kid, and I remember like driving, like being like a high school kid and like, you know, I was a little bit of a punk kid. Like I didn't, I didn't have a lot of, a lot of great stuff going on, but like, I remember driving around the street, like grew up in like a nice town and just like looking at these houses and they were like four or $500,000 and being like, you know, like eight bucks in my pocket, like just got fired from, you know, working at a fast food restaurant or something because I didn't show up for 10 days in a row. Um, being like, how would you ever afford, like, how would, how would a human being ever get like $400,000 to buy a house? Like, how would that ever happen? And like, also just thinking everybody was super competent and super confident, like thinking that adults knew everything. Like my assumption was like that the guy, like I, there were guys spraying mosquitoes that were here like two hours ago. And I started talking to him and like one of them has been on the job for like four days. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. Like he, he doesn't, he, there's no like meth. But when I was a kid, I would look at like the guy, I would look at someone like that was doing yard work in my yard and think like that person, not that we had people come over and do yard work in my yard, but like theoretically, like that person knows exactly what they're doing. They must be like a career professional at this. The same thing happens with money. Like the, through this business, I've, I've gotten to talk to some of the largest investors in the world. You know, I've talked to more billionaires uh, through this business than I had you know, previously times 10. And, and all super smart people, right? And all, just like you said, went for it. And, like, and, and they all have similar qualities where they just freaking go for it. They just they put, the, put, the, put the, but they don't know everything. Like the smart money, they get a lot wrong. Like yeah. the smartest, most sophisticated investors in the world, like VCs have like a 90% fail rate. They, 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 the 90% break even or fail rate in their portfolio. And I think that what's, you know, what can give everyone listening confidence is like the, the difference between what you think the gap is between where you're at and where the people that you emulate or idolize or look up to or feel like are so far out of, out of reach for you what you perceive that gap to be and what that gap to be are two dramatically different things. And just by, as you say, like just by willing to get in the arena and go for it, like we had nothing to lose. Now, 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 now what I think is interesting is when, when you do have something to lose, so we had nothing to lose. Like we, we bought a couple of businesses. We deployed like a million bucks. Like the, 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 it was low risk, right? The game now is much higher risk. You know, I have a lot of people I really care about that are investors in the business. We have huge, big institutional investors. We have, you know, we, we have, we have hundreds of people on the team that we care about. The stakes are, st are, are way higher than ever. And, and, and although you have to pivot a little bit and like, I wake up every single day thinking, how do I de-risk this business? How do I, more than I think about like, how do I make it fly, you know, in the, in, in the, in the cloud, like how do I de-risk it? You still have to be able to retain that ability and that willingness to just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it can be tough to balance all those things, man. I think a lot of it can be summed up by like trust. You know, like I remember being that that young kid and not having that trust or confidence in myself and just going the the down the path that, you know, school had had put out there for me. And oh, you want to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house one day, you can get a loan, you know, and you can pay it off in thirty five yeah. years and you know, like, oh, we'll we'll solve that problem for you. I'm very fortunate that like, I hit some very hard times in my life where I had to develop confidence in myself. And when I came out of that, you know, that's when I kind of swung the pendulum the other way where it's like, I'll just go for anything. Um, and then, I, you know, now I got to kind of dial it in a little bit and, and moderate that behavior. Do you, do you worry about, uh, you know, with kids? It, it's something my wife and I talk about incessantly. Like, how do you create that struggle? You work so hard so that they're comfortable and then them being comfortable, you know, is, is, it can be a problem. Um, think about that a lot. Yeah. Probably every day, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, um, yeah. And, and again, I think it comes down to a balance. One thing I've come to realize is like, like the, my time is really the most important thing. And I, yeah. I'm, if, if I, if I focus on time and kind of take money out of the picture, it's like, it's like, okay, I trust myself as a father and how I'm yep. raising these kids. And I trust that yep. these kids are going to grow up and they're going to make good decisions and take care of themselves and make their own money. But of course I do want to, 
you know, I want to provide for them as well. Um, of course. So trying to balance both of those things um, with teaching them good skills. It's uh, kind of like being a good leader in the business, right? Like totally. um, giving them the space to figure things out on their own. Um, I geek out on the kids all the time, man. I've got, I've got four. My oldest is 11. Uh, we got a 10 month old and just seeing how capable every single human being comes into this planet blows my mind. Yeah, totally. And then I they agree. go to school and we're taught, you know, this is wrong about you. Don't do this this way. Oh yeah. You feel this way in your body, but don't listen to that. Like that's, you know, that stuff's wrong. Right. Like, uh, but man, totally agree. the kids, dude, they just come into life. Great. And it only gets worse. Like, like, you know, elementary school, I remember it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. And it was like, everyone's like, I want to be an astronaut. And there's been, I don't know, I feel like there's been like 10 astronauts ever that have like, ever, yeah. you know, done anything. 30 of us wanted to be astronauts. And the teacher's like, you can do anything you want to do. You can be anything you want to be. And then like somewhere around like middle school, the whole thing flips, right? Just yeah. like you say, like the whole thing flips and it's like, no, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. Not your family, not this, not that. Uh, and people want to keep you down. And I think some of that, I think some of that comes from people that didn't get what they want out of this world. Um, wanting to say the reason why they didn't get what they want out of this world is because not just teachers, teachers are amazing, but you know, just adults yeah. in general, people that aren't happy with it, they, they didn't go for it and they're stuck and they want, and they don't want to say I'm stuck because I made bad decisions. They want to say I'm stuck because the world's unfair and I'm stuck because it's really hard and it's rigged against you and it's not fair and it's not fair. And it's not fair. It's not fair. And like, I mean, don't you feel like the world is not fair totally in your favor? After you become successful, like it, right. it, 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 I don't know if fair is right. It's certainly not balanced, right? Yeah. Um, and and just yeah, yeah. yeah the world's the right, not a fair place, you know. I think it's that's not fair uh, at all. It's, it's not fair. You know, you you look at how you have to navigate the world, the real world. You know, like go out into the jungle and spend a couple of days and see how fair things are in the jungle, totally. right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And that's kind of where we are, whether I think whether we realize it or not, we are there. You know, there's less blood, there's less gore, there's less fighting, but we live in an unfair world. And and I think it, I, I had to start becoming more selfish. And this isn't something you hear people talk a lot about um, because it sounds kind of shitty up front. Oh, Nick's selfish. Like, I had to realize that I had to care more about myself than other people. Cause I kept, I was just like a people pleaser for too long. And that kind of came from school and you know, how, how I was taught there and how I grew up, but I just made never... a lot of bad decisions trying to please other people. You made a lot of bad decisions. And then when your back gets, gets against the wall, you make decisions you really don't want to make. Like that's when I would do things I would regret because I didn't know how to take care of myself the right way. So I would get into a position where I kind of in a way that I really didn't want to. Um, but when I flipped that around and I started taking care of myself more, I was happier. I was able to help more people, right? So you actually go through this change where taking care of yourself more allows you to help other people. Totally agree. On, on airplanes, they say, you know, when the mask comes down, you got to put yours on before you help someone else put theirs on. Yeah, 100%, man. And I think this is kind of what I see you guys building. I think this is what MDS has built. I think this is what good communities build. It's creating this space where we can get rid of the bullshit and just be open and honest, right? Like, yeah, here, I tried this. Uh, I launched this brand. I lost $150,000, you know, like no shame. Uh, here's the 12 things I would do differently based on what I went through, you know, and that, that's the type of stuff we want to be sharing. Yeah, we've learned a lot from the way you guys do. I mean, we like I said, we, we, we do, I don't know, 125 events we'll do this year. Um, the MDS events are are the best. I mean, not just from like an ROI perspective, because you guys have a bunch of great sellers, um, which, you know, um, that is that can also be true. But no, just just the thoughtfulness, the how much you all focus on uh, the holistic view of the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur is a person first and foremost. And a lot of the health and mental health stuff that you all do and a lot of the, the, the training that you do and how you urge everyone to meet each other 
some of the 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 rapid fire you know round table stuff that you all do it, it's really it's really awesome the way you all have curated that is is it's it's i i enjoy going to the events like I'm, i can't wait to go to um barcelona it's actually where yeah. my oldest daughter was born um nice. our, our, our first child yeah yeah living over in spain i'm building a direct sales business and and i'm super excited to go for a bunch of reasons i haven't been to barcelona in a while i'll see a bunch of people um um you know, in your group that I, that I love, that I love chopping it up with, um, you know, there's a great business angle there. Um, but I just like, I just like the way you all do it. I think that the, that the, that it's second to none and that people are crazy if they're qualifying and they're not applying and trying to get in the group. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an amazing community, the events team, Ari and, and the whole team, but Ari and Eugene, I think really paved the way for saying these are the standards we're going to set for our events. You know, we're going to do these, uh, you know, like the meet and speed and we're going to do these rapid fire questions. And I remember cure, I remember writing questions, pairing people up and like coming up with questions based on the people and how they were paired up. I mean, that's the level of detail that goes into an, an MDS. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work that they put in and it, and it shows and it pays off and it's great from a business perspective. I always come back focused. That's what I get out of it. I'll be like, okay, these are the three things I'm going to work on for the next 30 days or something like that. And then I just have a great time from a personal perspective as well. You know, that, you know, you know that made me think about is, you know, I think some people are just are incredibly disciplined people with great habits and they and they are able to apply that to business. Um, for myself, like I was a kid when I started, I was, I was, I was playing in a band. I was like on fish tour. I was all around. I, I don't think I owned shoes for like a year at one point. And I fell into this, like what started as like a door to door sales job that turned into a huge career. Um, it's been just like a life changing, changing experience, but I didn't bring like incredible habits to, to business in business. I had to learn incredible habits in order to win. And then have kind of gone like inside out and then have taken those things that I learned and applied it to every other area in my life. Um, what you just described is like the, 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 the curation and the attention to detail. That's what it takes to take a brand from zero to, you know, a million plus um, and just apply, taking that same focus and applying it to the way you all run events. And it's, you know, so you have a bunch of high level performers that, have, that are the top of the top, top applying that to everything else that they do. It's fantastic. Yep. Yep. And I'm, I'm similar to you, man. I never had the, the best habits. Like I had to pick those up and, and it's sometimes it's tough for me to keep them going, uh, but that's how I look at the business now too. It's like, you know, how can I do less, but do it really well, not try to do too much at once. I try to give my team too much stuff to do, you know, let them really master a few things and then move on to something else. Cause me, like I'm, I'm an idea guy and I kind of went, I thought, I kind of thought everyone was an idea guy for a while, <laughs> but it's not, but they're not, you know, it seems so natural when it's your thing. It's just like, Oh, I, you know, everyone's like this, but my business partner, he's like, Nick, you have a solution for everything. He's like, I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't believe in impossible. Like I just don't, I really don't believe in impossible. So when something gets thrown my way, I'm like, immediately, I'm like, Oh, I'll figure this out. Having that balance, having that balance and having the right partner is so important. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, it's I had, definitely um, helpful. yeah, we, we, uh, when I was doing the investing stuff, uh, my partner and I were the lead investors on, on a business that was doing a roll up of mental health clinics, uh, ketamine clinics in the U S and, and Kazi, uh, uh, one of my two co-founders, at, uh, one of my co-founders at carbon six, he, uh, he was, he was one of the founders of that business. And when I met him, this was a person that was the exact opposite of me. And, uh, you know, he had done everything right his whole life. I, I think he went to, you know, went to Dartmouth and then he went to Harvard Business School. Then he like licensed technology from his university and created a business that he sold to Whirlpool, which is like almost impossible dealing with like the bureaucracy of a university and getting technology out. Like the universities in our country have incredible technology that no one can do anything with. You managed to do that. And just an incredibly detail-oriented, action-oriented, like conscientiousness, times a million yeah. person. And it, when I had the idea for carbon six, he was the first person I called because, you know, like you, I thought I had a lot of great ideas and I'm, I, I build a team and fire up a team and, and do all that stuff. Um, but knew that I needed someone that was going to dot every I and cross every T, especially when we had a heavy, 
you know, M&A focus just to get a push off the line initially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice when you can get people like siloed, like the same personality types. It's just like, dude, go be you. Like here, you can go totally. be you guys together and just do your totally. thing. And then you just have someone, another team coming by, cleaning up all the, the mess behind them. But overall, it's, it's usually a positive, you know, at the end of the day. Um, so it's great when you can foster that culture too. Yeah. Yeah. hundred What are you guys doing with your, um, uh, one great thing I love about carbon six is how you guys approach, uh, the buying of another company, how you approach the owners. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Cause I think that's something unique that you guys do as well. So, so I, yeah, I think uh, we recognize that we were Amazon people, um, and that one of the things that we thought would make some aggregators struggle was that they weren't Amazon people. And our view on that was that a PhD in Amazon is more important than an MBA from Wharton or Harvard. Um, and so we needed to solve a problem, which was, um, so we recognized that we didn't have Amazon expertise amongst the three of us. It was myself, Kazi, and then, and then Nassim. Um, who had gone to Harvard Business School with Kazi and they'd known each other for, for a decade. Um, and so we wanted to solve that problem. And so we decided to make founder-friendly deals where we would retain all of the founders on our team. I think today we have about 20 people working with Carbon6 that haven't had a job for two, five, you know, Lee and Robert from Seller Investigators. I don't know if those guys have ever had a job. Um, yeah. You know, and, and they'd both just turned 50 over the last couple of years. Um, and so it, it solved, you know, originally it was just to solve this problem of, we want to have intelligent Amazon experience in the room. And I think today we have, we don't have as much Amazon selling experiences as MDS, but we have more than just about anybody else. Um, and, and have be making good decisions in our product room and making sure that we're making decisions that are, that benefit our ICP, which is the professional seller and the large and, and the large brand on Amazon. So that's why we did it initially. And, and it's been awesome. I mean, even a couple of the founders that originally were going to sell and leave have come back and they now work with us too. Um, what it did though, I think is far more special than just filling a need because you can make good product decisions. We have a product advisory committee. Um, you know, you, you're, you, you, you and several other members of MDS are part of that. We have dozens of people in the community that we've brought in um, to Carbon6 in different ways to make sure that we're making the best decisions on what we build for, for, and, and really like what we say is if we build properly for the MDS seller, then, then everyone else, even if they don't know that it's what they need, it's what they need. And we'll yeah. be able to take, take the market, you know, all the way to the top, um, which is, you know, I'm happy to say is, is, is being proven out, I think this year in, in, in many different ways, but what it gave us is this entrepreneurial spirit. And look, you, you look at businesses, once the founder energy goes, um, that's, yeah. a, that's a point like, oh, their earn out must be up because that business has gotten a lot worse in the last six yeah. months. Like I've had a lot of people talk about, you know, even softwares in our space specifically about this over the last few months. Um, but what it's given us is this incredible founder energy, Nick, where, and our, you know, our, 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 we, we say we all own carbon six. It's one of our major principles. And we also say that, that if, if, if what we do is good for the sellers, if we continue to do whatever is good for the sellers, it'll be good for carbon six. But the energy that it creates is there's entrepreneurial energy throughout everything. And we really try to empower the team to go fast. You know, I think Zuckerberg first said, go fast and break things, like just go for it. And because we have so many people that are wired that way because they're entrepreneurs, you know, there's, there's entrepreneurial that side and that spirit on, in virtually every virtual room for every call in every meeting. And it, yeah. it creates, it creates a really awesome company to work in and a yeah. really awesome company to lead. That's super powerful, man. It's I've been to a couple of the carbon. I think I've been to two carbon six events where it was like just stuff that you guys had put on. And, um, it reminded me of the MDS, the energy, right? Like how excited everyone is to talk about what they're doing. At, and you're also talking about and relationships, and, you know, what you do for fun when you're not working. Everything was on the table. It, it wasn't this kind of growing up, you know, I always heard like work-life separation, you know, and I'm like, it never really made sense to me. I was like, how do, work. I have a work, how, how do I have a work, Nick, and a, 
in a not work, Nick. Like I don't know how that exists, but when, when they're um, clearly when they're clearly going to bleed into each other, yeah. And, and and the and the life is and the and the and the and the home life is what mo- is is the biggest motivator for the work life. Yeah, totally. yeah. Um, and and that's the vibe I got when it was the one in Miami. Forget what, what maybe it was. It was the Q4 it was, kickoff. It was the Q4 was kickoff. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, was a cool idea too. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it again. I think we're gonna do it again. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed being there, meeting everyone, and like just like you said, the energy is there, and it is magical. And you don't hear people talk about like energy and and the impact it can have on a room. You you hear people talk about charisma, but I feel like even then it's kind of at a shallow level. Like what a charismatic leader is. Yeah. Charisma is like is is helpful for like outward brand and can act is not necessarily helpful and can actually be the opposite towards having a group that really really gets along. You know, it's it's interesting. I was I was talking to, um, you know, you could be charismatic and not always lead with your charisma, right? Um, uh, I was talking to uh, Ian who. Um, uh, you know, one of the founders and maybe the founder of, of, of your group at, at Inspire. That event was awesome, by the way. Yeah, um, that was a good the, one. The, 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 the overshadowing of Prosper. Uh, check. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and, and I was saying, you know, Ian is a very confident guy. He's, he's a charismatic guy. And, and, I, and I see the way he is with your group and, and what I said to him, and I hope it's okay I'm saying here, I said, hey, Ian, like what I noticed over the last several days being around you is, how good of a job you have a bunch of, there's a lot of type A, there's a lot of, there's a lot of charismatic, there's a lot of, there's a lot of confident people, there's a lot of successful people in a, in, in a group. And, and I think he does a very good job of not always forcing himself at the, at the yeah. front to be that charismatic leader. And it gives people a lot of space. And it was just something that I noticed. And, and it's something that I'm, I try to be very conscious of, of too, um, you know, uh, uh, in my previous life, like I've been on stages all over the world that I did public speaking, you know, um, professionally in multiple languages at, at, at one point as well. But, but we've, we've brought a lot of entrepreneurs in we've brought a lot of people that had platforms. We've brought a lot of Amazon people in and just making sure that enough that, 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 that there's not a charismatic leader that is, that is, that is running it in a way that doesn't allow space for everyone else to breathe and everyone else to be excited to be here early on in my career. When I first started developing, teaching people how to run their own business, and they were they'd be in my office, that was something I had to learn. I was so alpha, and I was so like type A, and I thought that the way to win was like like Kobe Bryant, like I got like I'm taking every shot, um, and 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 it you know it it worked to some extent, but it didn't yeah. create it didn't create as big and flourishing of an organization as I wanted, and that was something I really had to learn. And, yeah, and, and I think it can kind of push people away too. Maybe push people away you don't want to push away. It pushes away confident people, and and yeah. the, and, and those are the people who are going to move the needle for your organization because those are the people that people are, people are going to listen to confident people, and and when you always have to be the one who's right in the room, when you always have to be the big ego and the alpha in the room, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't leave space for 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 those people who also believe they can be the difference maker, and 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 being the difference maker might be what drives them. It might be what turns them on. It might be what gets them at their very, 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 very best. Yeah, Ian's good at that stuff. I've I've sat in a couple like full day meetings with him and and he's very he's naturally good at that. I, I noticed um early on. I remember even messaging him after a meeting like in Slack and like just kind of acknowledging that um, that that I had noticed that. Cause it was like me, Eugene, Frankie you know, a couple other totally. people in the room and like, he bunch was just of very to bunch yeah. of winners. <laughs> yeah. It's a bunch of winners and, 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 and winners like to, sh- like to, to, to shoot their shot. Um, yeah, it wouldn't work otherwise. Right. right. It, 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 it wouldn't work otherwise. Um, and, um, and I think he's done that from the beginning with MDS. I think that's part of what makes it so special is he got out of the way immediately. You know, he created the group, he nurtured the group, but he got out of the way. He never pegged himself as, as the leader or, you know, the guru um, or anything like that. And, you know, That's we special. have core about, val- yeah, we have core values that were created by the members. Um, you know, all these, these member driven things that, that are going on. Like we, they have the advisory board as well, the advisory council uh, that everything runs through. 
It's awesome. So there's a lot of checks and balances in there to make sure everything runs how the community wants it to run, uh, which is important for, for that part. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools you guys have to offer so every, everyone knows about them. I've, I've got some that I use, but... Uh, and I'll definitely mention those, but why don't you just mention some of the ones you're you're excited about that you guys have acquired and uh, are yeah, seeing success Yeah, perfect. So, with. so um, yeah, we'll talk about Pixlemy first. So, uh, Pixlemy is the only ad tech platform on earth where you can run Google, Meta, and TikTok ads directly to your Amazon listing with deep linking attribution to your storefront, get back the the brand referral bonus. And we have figured out a way um, to optimize for conversion as opposed to optimizing for clicks. So a lot of people have tried to turn these 3 billion daily searches on Google into, into opportunities on Amazon. Um, we have uh, found a way through our own proprietary algorithm and patent pending technology to optimize for click. Uh, so pardon me, to optimize for conversion. Um, we're seeing incredible results. Um, every, everything from infinite, infinite, in, infinite ROAS. So for, for some high, so for some high, um, priced items over 80 bucks, we can usually get the acquisition cost uh, of acquiring within within 60 days, less than what you get back in the brand referral bonus, which means that you'll make more money off of a, off of a sale driven from Google than you will off an organic sale on Amazon. Call that infinite ROAS. We're going to try to coin that term like, yeah. you know, Pat Riley coined three Pete, um, infinite ROAS. Um, that's been a rocket ship. We launched that seven weeks ago and we've grown the business 10X. We, we, when we acquired it, it was a URL shortener and a, and, and a, and a, and a pixel where, where, you know, used by marketers and used by some of the biggest brands in the world and a bunch of the data that we had from that, as well as our product advisory, uh, council was able to, our committee was able to, um, help us develop that. And then, um, you know, I, 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 I uh, we'll be talking about that, you know, I'm sure at, at, at the end of the month. So I think that's a no brainer for everybody. Um, it's no secret at this point that Amazon disproportionately rewards, um, disproportionately rewards you with organic ranking juice for sales that are driven off of the, from off of their platform, which is common sense. Um, uh, there's been some confusion on whether or not it's worth it or not, um, based on, on just optimizing for clicks, optimizing for conversion. It's totally worth it. We're already doing this for, I don't know, 50 or 60 uh, M M MDS members. Um, it's, 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 it's awesome. You just submit for, you submit a couple ASINs. Um, we should have people do this before the event. Uh, and we'll just come up and show you the results. We show you all the opportunities where, 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 where it makes sense, um, where, where, where it makes sense. We can even do it for you and run the ads for you um, at, 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 at no additional cost. So that's Pixlamate. Um, now which I'll try, I want to chime in on the pixel me real quick. Cause I see a lot of people like asking, does it work? Does it do this? I heard this. I heard that. Like, just go yeah. try it. <laughs> just go yeah, sign yeah. up and try yeah, the, 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 we also heard that it was against TOS. Um, one of our competitors like sent out, I, I guess they thought that they were speaking on behalf of Amazon, which is interesting. Um, they sent out an email, um, uh, you know, we, work really, really closely with Amazon. They are very comfortable um, at last, you know, conversation with the way we're doing things. Um, of course, it's not against TOS. If it was against TOS, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in the app store. We wouldn't be in the advertising yeah. store. Um, but yeah, look, look, it, 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 uh, it works substantially better than optimizing for clicks and external is a, is an essential part of, of of launch and in many cases we can make it an evergreen revenue generator where again in the best of cases and we have at this point a hundred or more case studies to show this you make more money off this sale driven from google throw out the fact that you're going to get three or ten x ranking juice depending on what estimate you believe um then you would offer an again excel and you know leading up into in, in, into quarter four um, you know, we could all, we, we could all use, uh, uh, ranking higher for, for organically for, for a whole bunch of keywords. Um, so that's one, uh, data driven, which we had developed Nick with, with your, with your help, we acquired this business and this would become a, a core part of, of our offering. Um, previously it had been full service. We work with some of the largest sellers on Amazon in a full service capacity, um, several dozen, um, what we've developed it into is an executive summary 
So through, uh, through um, uh, various algorithms and some ML, I like to be really, you know, everyone says that there's AI and ML yeah. and everything. It's a lot of, it's just like, if then yeah. so through some slightly more sophisticated than normal, <laughs> right. If then, um, as well as a ton of experience, the founders of that, uh, of that business were, were, were our ex Amazon. Um, we produce an ex executive summary, which tells you everything that happened in your business and why a set of recommendations and action items. Um, it's, uh, I, I, you know, we have an offering there, which I think is like a hundred bucks a week. And it's, you know, it, it, it gives you everything that you need for an executive summary and, and, and to help guide your team. And I want to, um, I want to chime it, in on this one too, because you got, this is such a good service. This is such a good service. Um, I think I'm paying 500 bucks a month for it. I hooked up three of our accounts to it. You get the executive summary, you get the tasks broken down by function. So like marketing operations. So you can assign these out very easily to people on your team. And I've also feel like I delegated auditing off of my plate because that was my job to come in and awesome. audit the account. I feel like I don't, I'm hoping I don't really have to do that anymore, which is huge. You know, huge. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's the idea. And, and, but, 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 but Nick, so when we acquired the business, we don't really want to be in the full service game, but they had some big clients and, and we liked the people and. And so, and so we acquired the business on, it made sense to us. We liked the idea. We had been planning on doing the executive side. We'd plan, been planning on doing this as part of the core carbon six hub, um, which will be releasing very soon. Um, she's very exciting. Uh, but, but you said, do they have anything other than full service? Like, I, like, cause I, I don't want to give someone my baby. Like I'm the, 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 or else what's the point of all the experience that we gained and, and the mastermind that we have here at India. And so we, we immediately. You know, we validated that several other people had said the same thing. And so appreciate the, appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Like, again, we, uh, that's, that's why we want to align with, with, with MBS. Right? Yeah. Stay as close to ours as possible. If we make their lives easier, we'll make our lives better as well. Um, so stocked, which really, um, you know, you're many of the first few dozen power users that Chelsea had, um, were, 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 were MDS. Um, uh, we've taken that to new heights. Um, we now integrate with NetSuite. We, we, we're really becoming an enterprise solution. A lot of bulk stuff, just everything that we heard, members that liked it and then disconnected. I and mean, we've taken all the feedback. It's a dramatically different software than it was. Um, many of your members love it. Many of your members had some feedback. We've taken that on board. Um, that's, that's a huge runner for us. And then, and then our profit recovery stuff. So sell investigators, we've been able to 5X that business uh, since we acquired it uh, 10 months ago. Charge Guard 1P, which we, we have the only, um, only and, and not just only, but definitely the industry leading solution, we believe, for profit recovery between our technology, between our team. There's a service component. As you know, you, you can't automate the opening of these cases. We have an incredible team over the Philippines um, uh, that, 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 that does that. We just launched um, the first to market uh, doing a true refunds. Um, so these are all refunds that weren't recovered or sent back the wrong item or a go the, the, or the refund was processed and it's gone past 60 days and the item wasn't returned. Um, weights and dimensions were the only one in the market that will go after weights and dimensions. And really like the strength of our a strength of what we're assembly, uh, assembling here, Nick, is that because the lifetime value of every customer is worth more to us than any of our competitors on these individual these ing the, the individual single point solution competitors. The reality is that we can throw more money into making it a better product. If there's a service component, we can throw more human resources into it. We can also generally win on price because, because everything can be a loss leader to us, right? Because we have so many other things. Um, with ChargeGuard, we work with many of the largest uh, sellers in the world, parts of Nestle, Mars, Sanofi, um, you know, Metallurgy, et cetera. Um, uh, with, with seller investigators who we've come into the market um, you know, like I said, and, and the business has grown 5X and, and we, you know, we, we, there's so much green space there. We're expanding internationally. And I would say that really those are the five, you know, pixel made data driven, so stocked. So investigators in charge guard. And I also want to say like, and there's a bunch of other stuff in the lab. Like we have a bunch of new improvements for our PPC tool, PPC entourage, and that'll come out. We have a bunch of, bunch of stuff going on in the hub, but we, we, we try to be really careful, not just with your group, especially with your group, because you all are the best critics and the harshest critics. And, you know, we took Pixel Me to, to market too early, about a year and a half, about a year ago. 
when we admitted that we were a company at the next roster. Yeah. And uh, it had just been published, like put, put into production, I think an hour before the show and it wasn't <laughs> ready. And I learned that was all my fault. I learned the lesson really, really quickly. And so we're, we're just very, we're very careful not to, we're very careful not to put, not to, not to go touting anything until we're confident that what we're offering is the best thing that exists on the planet for sellers. Yes, man. Well, I think you guys are doing the right thing. Like um, seller investigators, I started using you guys. Um, I was using, I don't even know who the hell we were using. It was like, I could, couldn't even remember the name of the company. Um, and then I saw it come through on the invoice and it was some like small uh, reimbursement company. I'd have to pull it up to get the name, but they had found like $500 during a certain time frame. I sent it over to Lee and they found like $30,000. <laughs> And look, and look, there's there, there's a lot of we're gonna do a full deep dive video on taking out the mystery behind this uh, tomorrow, because um, there's there's you know some company they'll, they'll do audits and they'll show this big raw number that's not a real number. Yeah. When we give it, when we do an audit, we're saying we know we're gonna be able to recover ninety plus percent of exactly what we're telling you, and and we'll go case by case and bit by bit, and we can do refunds. The, the normal missing and bound loss and damage, we can do refunds. We can do we can do weights and dimensions. Um, but there's also, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that happens in that, in that part of the business. So not only do we recover more money faster, but also with more transparency. And I think that's really important. Uh, there's the, the reversals happen. Yeah. So, so we, we go in and we file for a case and you get reimbursed. Right. And we take our success fee and then Amazon finds the inventory and then they reverse the reimbursement to you. And, and a lot of people have to ask the reimbursement company, hey, are you charging me for reversals? And then magically they stop getting charged for it. We've seen a lot of that. We want to earn trust and be as open, as honest as possible and 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 really align ourselves with with the biggest with big, best sellers and the biggest brands. And 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 we view this as a 20 year, 50 year relationship where we plan on being the 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 company that that consolidates the largest customers behind us in the space. Nice, man. I think, I think you guys are doing it right. Like that's been my experience. You guys have already gotten back like $12,000 of that original amount uh, that you said you would get. And I know they're working through the rest of them. Our supply chain team has it on their, their weekly scorecard. Uh, so I know that's moving the right direction and, and we haven't had any issues pop up with, with reversals, not saying they might, they might come It's part of the business, right? Sure. Like Amazon sure. loses stuff and then they find it, right? Like it's going to happen. Uh, magical. <laughs> um, and I do want to mention the data driven, uh, feet, one data driven feature I found extremely valuable. Unfortunately, I found it a little too late, but I had spent, um, I think I spent like $8,000 having a data warehouse built, uh, in Google BigQuery, which is cool. It's great to have my own data and stuff and visualize it. Wasn't really happy with the visualizations. And I think that's how I found out. I don't know how I found out about the self-tasking service and data-driven, but I was talking to Craig, uh, who's one of the main guys over there, and yep. he showed me the Excel reports. And I was like, Craig, do we, you know, is this our data? Like we, you know, we have a forever look back period, basically, as long as we're with you guys. And he said, yes. Um, and that was one of the main reasons for having the data warehouse <laughs> built. <laughs> uh, so I didn't need it anymore. And and now I kind of have this data warehouse that I'm not, I'm not using right now. I, I'll probably have some visualizations built out of it and do other things, but there's so many people in MDS looking for that solution and they don't know it's there and that they can have it in like a week and it's just 500 bucks a month. And please keep the suggestions going. And that goes for, you know, anybody listening to this, please keep, we, we take every piece of feedback ridiculously seriously. We, we, we know that you all know better than we know. And that's a guiding principle. Yeah. And I think that's enough for anyone listening who's, you know, a relatively successful seller or has some money and they want to start using the right tools for their business. Like Carbon6 is taking direction from the best Amazon sellers in the world when they're building their tools. And like, those are the people you want building your tools because you'll get caught up with a lot of useless features people that are good mar at marketing will get you all hyped up and worked up about totally and 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 it, like it sounds obvious right but early on we, we'd be in a room and we go oh i think we think we should do this and very and and 
you know, everyone knows I do this. Like we're not making any decision until there's more Amazon sellers in the room than non Amazon sellers. So let's just stop talking about it. Nice. Nice. That's probably a good one to go by because it's just so easy to get excited about an idea and, and not really validate it first. Uh, I think we all kind of suffer, suffer from that, man. But I'm excited to see what you guys bring out next. Um, I'm definitely a fan of the Carbon 6 suite, and, and we're using more and more of it every, every day. I mean, we start getting onboarded with some, some of your guys' tools, and I'll keep the suggestions coming your way. And uh, it's been good to sit down and chat with you. I haven't seen you in a while. I'll I'll miss you in Barcelona. I'm gonna be at my daughter's oh, first day of school. That's a great yeah. That's a great um, reason to miss it. But cool. um, I'll be at plenty of See other MDS events, man. I'll be there. Definitely gonna be in Vegas for the next awesome. inspire. Thanks, Nick. You got it, Appreciate Justin. Thanks for coming on, man. Have a great one.